Hello everyone and welcome to the video on digital image processing aspect of the perspective transformation of an image. This is a follow up video that comes after the coding aspect of perspective transformation in which we did the perspective transformation or we performed the perspective transformation using OpenCV with Python. But this video is not dependent on the earlier one. I have made the two videos such that they are independent even though they are two aspects of the same problem. So if you haven't watched the coding aspect, you can always watch the coding aspect after watching this video or you can always go back and watch coding aspect before you watch this video. So let's begin. What is perspective transformation and how it's done? So in digital image processing, there's actually a method defined and which goes by the name image registration and that is how perspective transformation is done and what is perspective transformation well it's a geometrical transformation so basically there are two kinds of transformations that can be applied on an image one of them is geometrical transformation and the other is intensity transformation so when we take the coordinates of the pixel from the input image and geometrically change the location or the coordinates of the pixel in the output image, the transformation is known to be called as geometrical transformation. Whereas when we change the intensity value of the pixels in the input image and in the output image, the intensity values of the pixels at the same location have been changed, maybe multiplied by five or divided by four or added by two or maybe integrated, differentiated, whatever the intensity uh, some kind of calculation is applied on the intensity values then it is known to be called as the intensity transformation examples of intensity transformation well thresholding changing color models converting co colored image to black and white image producing the image negative of an image these are all intensity transformations whereas for geometrical transformation we have perspective transformation by itself as one of its example so first of all, let's try to precisely point out what are the changes that are being applied on the input image by this transformation. So first of all, you can see on the left screen or that is the input frame. What we have done is we have selected four corner points. Now, so on the left side, I have my screen as this. And on the right side, we have the same screen, but with perspective transform perspectively transformed image so if i join the four corner points i'll obtain a shape which in this case is a trapezoid and on the right side we have obtained the perspective transformation that is that is nothing but geometrical transformation and it appears to be that we have zoomed the image as well as it appears as if now we are looking from the top so the term for it is bird's eye view. It's not a standard term, but it's something that I came across a lot of time on internet. So the question is, what was exactly done by this transformation? Well, to understand this, let's mark the coordinates of top left corner on the input image as x1, y1, bottom left corner as x2, y2, bottom right as x3, y3, and the top right as x4, y4. These were the four coordinates that we selected on the input image. Now, these are points 1. Points 1 is nothing but the four coordinates on the input image. Now, x1 dash y1 dash is the top left on the output, x2 dash y2 dash is the bottom left on the output, x3 dash y3 dash is the bottom right on the output, and x4 dash and y4 dash is the top right on the output image. And now let's call this set of four points as points 2. So now we can say that perspective transformation was a geometrical transformation on the coordinates of the pixel such that the top left corner point x1 y1 which we selected on the input image somehow got shifted to the absolute top left of the screen which were x1 dash y1 dash. Similarly, the top right corner that we selected on the input image x4 y4 got somehow transformed geometrically to the absolute right of the screen bottom left got transformed to geometrically to the absolute bottom left and bottom right got tra geometrically transformed to the absolute bottom right so what i can say is if 
I store four of the points, uh, four of the corner points in points one in order. I can and do the same in points two. I can say that the points each element in the points one array, which contains four elements, four points, uh, got transformed to the corresponding destination points in points two. So now we know exactly what happened to the coordinates. Now let's figure out how it was done. How was this transformation done? So image registration can be done using different polynomial degrees. So one of the basics is to use bilinear transformation. You can always go for higher degrees, cubic spline, quadratic and so on. As the degree increases, the quality improves, improves but uh, and the smoothness of the images, image also improves but uh, it gets tougher to explain uh, and not explain it gets tougher for in, in terms of computation so the computation power required increases. So I am sticking with bilinear transformation just for the sake that I don't have to write a long huge equation I can always write a small equation and then explain how that ex equation is being used to perform the transformation. So x dash is equal to c1x plus c2y plus c3xy plus c4. So this is simply, this is nothing but simply a bilinear equation and where x dash is the coordinate, x coordinate of the output image which depends on x and y coordinates of the input image and the constant c1, c2, c3 and c4. Similarly, the bilinear equation for y, da y dash will be y dash is equal to I'll take constants as b so b1x plus b2y plus b3xy plus b4. So here we have four control points, four constants c1, c2, c3, c4. These points, this, uh, these coordinate, uh, these con constants are called also called as control points, and here we have also, uh, also four control points and these are b1, b2, b3 and b4. Now these control points are also known as tie points and as the degree of polynomial will increase, the computation will increase and the number of control points will also increase and therefore since the number of control points will increase, the quality will improve and the smoothness will also improve. Now let's put x1, y1 that is the top left corner of the image into this equation. Now we know that we know the coordinates of x1, y1. We, we, we actually, in fact, it was us that marked those four coordinates on the input image. So those four coordinates are known. And we also know the x dash and y dash, that is the absolute left and absolute left is 0 comma 0, we know that. So x1, y1 and x1 dash, y1 dash are known. And we have four Mm, unknowns c1 c2 c3 and c4 now the equation will be x1 dash is equal to c1 x1 plus c2 y1 plus c3 x1 y1 plus c4 similarly i'll write the equations for x2 y2 and x2 dash x3 y2 x3 y3 and y3 dash x4 y4 and y4 x4 dash so remember that all the, all the four coordinates on input is known and all the four coordinates on the output or the transformed image, the corner points, the four coordinates are also known. So we have four equations and there were four unknowns, four constants. So using these equations, we can obtain the values of C1, C2, C3 and C4. Now these coordinates, these constants are obtained and similarly, we can write the equations for x1, y1 and y1 dash, x2, y2 and y2 dash, x3, y3 and y3 dash, x4, y4 and y4 dash to obtain the constants b1, b2, b3 and b4 because those are four constants, four unknowns and we have four corresponding equations to obtain them. So in the bilinear transformation equation, we used four set of coordinates on the input and four set of coordinates on the output to obtain the constants. Now these, these equations are uh, equations where the constants are known and are constant with variables x1, y1 or x, y and x dash, y dash. So this is our transformation function right here. 
and if I take any arbitrary point inside the in, in, enclosed inside uh, the four coordinates the enclosing figure drawn by joining the four corner points if I take any uh, if I take any arbitrary point I'll take a point below this white line white strip so this is some point say x comma y and it is the transformation over here below that white strip x dash y x dash y dash I'll put this x comma y coordinates into this transformation function and since all the coordinates are known it will output the corresponding x dash and y dash the location of the corresponding transformed location or coordinates of that same pixel so the pixel locations have been geometrically transformed using this function this function takes input as the coordinates are from the input image and gives out the output as the transformed coordinates. In OpenCV, the origin is considered at the top left and axes are positive x along horizontal and positive y axis downwards. So let's look at this in terms of matrix because remember computer understands image in the form of a matrix. So the above function equation can be written mat in matrix form as uh, some unknown matrix multiplied by the input coordinates gives the output coordinate. So the rightmost matrix contains nothing but the coordinates of the input image, the pixel locations. On the leftmost we have the output matrix which contains the output locations that is, in, that is it is in spatial domain and spatial domain is nothing but the domain in which we deal with coordinates. The alternative to this domain is frequency domain. It is widely used in image processing because it requires less processing, less computational power and therefore it is faster and efficient. And this is the mapping matrix. This is the matrix that is returned when you use cv2.get perspective transform. This is this for bilinear transformation it appears to be a very straightforward simple matrix but it won't be like that it is a complex matrix and it contains a lot of constant terms which is nothing but the control points so we can say that the input set of coordinates are transformed to the output set of coordinates when they are multiplied by the mapping matrix so input coordinates are transformed so since the coordinates are transformed, the transformation is geometrical transformation. So we have transformed the coordinates and since the coordinates are transformed, it's a geometrical transformation. So the transformation matrix is used to transform geometrically the coordinates, but by itself, it is still a matrix that contains the transformed locations, the transformed coordinates. So we have to or we need to use cv2.wrap perspective which actually wraps the using the which uses the transform ma this mapping matrix to wrap and give output in terms of image. And with that we are done looking at the perspective transformation from the digital image processing point of view. Uh, but in practical that is when we use OpenCV things are not this simple. I purposefully kept things simple and hid a lot of information because um, for instance when we see that uh, after applying the perspective transformation clearly we can observe that the image has been zoomed. How did that happen? Well for that there is required a lot of set of uh, precautions and procedures so that we zoom the image without uh, distorting it or destroying or getting unsmoothness, uh, sharp changes in the neighboring pixels. There are additional pixels added digitally and for that we use interpolation. So there is those bunch of stop, stuff and perspective transformation is not this straightforward but it is, it goes like this. There is this transformation function you give the input coordinates and it gives the output coordinates. So that is the basic, uh, the base, that, that is the base even today, but there are a lot of complications and troubles that you run into in uh, practically when you want to give a finished and clear output. So to tackle that, there is a bunch of complicated other procedures as well.
So thank you for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it and do share with your friends who are also working on image processing and have a great day.